Hi there. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use this tool to make a little knot button. So let's get started. So to make this knot, I'm going to be using um, tool number one from our knotting tools pack. So it's two tools in this pack. And tool number one has this series of prongs at the top. These are to aid in stitching on a button and to create a shank onto a button. And I'll do a video uh, at a later date showing how to use these. So I'm going to work a six bite Turk's head knot. So I'm going to need to make holding stitches, okay? So basically these holes represent the top of a knot, these holes the bottom of a knot. If I'm working a very long knot, I can take that down to these holes, all right? I like to start with this large hole here as a marker next to my number one stitch. Now in this case, because it's a six bite, I'm only going to need three at the front and then three at the back. So I'm gonna mark this up with a bit of tape that I have written onto it. So A and then one, two, three, and B, one, two, three, okay? This will become clearer as we go through. Flip over and do the same for the other side. So four, five, six, A and B. You won't need this eventually. Uh, the more that you tie the knots, the more you'll be able to see what you're doing without needing that tape marker. Now we have to make holding stitches. Now these are stitches that your thread that you make the actual knot from will be going underneath. So, I'm putting a stick here because I'm going to be using a three mil cord and I don't really want to be struggling. I want to have a little bit of space. But if you're using a very fine cord, you can just make a straight stitch. So that's one holding stitch. So at number one, going up, so the thread will come through it. We're going to put one at number two. And at number three. And now, while the needle is threaded and those stitches are in place, we're going to turn over the tool. You can see there's diagonals, but what we really want are straight stitches in order to hold the knotting cord in place. So this time going to go down. And now we have our straight stitches on that side. Okay, so we'll just make sure that we're happy with both sides. Yep. And now I'm just going to snip that and then tie this into a good knot. And really tie it into as, as good a knot as you can because you don't really want it coming loose while you're working because then it, you, it kind of defeats the object really. It'll happen occasionally, you won't tie it quite tight enough, but if you can set out right from the start to try to tie it, you'll be fine. And then snip off those ends. We'll remove the stick you can see that's given us a little bit of extra leeway with those long straight stitches and that will come 
very handy as we go through and make the knot. So now we need to repeat for the bottom. I'll just get a little bit more thread onto my needle. And at this point, you can use any needle that you want. The, the point is, is you just need to make sure that it'll go through the hole comfortably. This is all going to be thrown out away, so don't use any of your nice threads, you know. But at the same time, don't use anything too fluffy because that will probably interfere with the whole knot process. So straight stitches on one side. Turn over and straight stitches on the other side. Now I have marked this up just for the six to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. But of course you can just go straight across and then go straight across and then worry about numbering it up afterwards. That's entirely up to you as well. The instructions in the instruction booklet that comes with the tool, the set of tools, does have, for each particular knot, it tells you what you need to do, um, how many holding stitches you need to make. So there we are, three holding stitches at the bottom, three holding stitches at the top on the front, and likewise at the back. And as I say, I make the marker that the front is um, where this hole is to the left of me, but it's entirely up to you what direction you choose to work in. The first thing is, and this is why it makes it, why you can see why I do that, is that this is now the cord that I'm going to use for the knot. And I'll tie the starting end just to that hole and that way it will stay in position as I follow the instructions. Now the instructions for all of the knots are based on a series of um, letter and number instructions. So basically it just tells you to go from say A1 to B4 and that's what you do with your thread. Um, it's based on the universal knot grids um, and the large mandrels that have pegs. So from that point of view, that there's nothing different there except for we're not using pegs or pins, we're using holding stitches. And the reason for that is, is so that when you're using really fine cords, fine threads, even silk threads, you're not snagging, you're not catching. You're, you're just working them in a smaller um, process than on these mandrels that you would normally tie uh, paracord knots, for instance, on. So we're going to go from A1, so I'm gonna go under the holding stitch of A1, and then I need to go to B4. So to go to B4, I have to go around the tool, and that takes me to B4. Oh, and that's just masking tape, okay? And I, I'm on a bit of the waist of the thread, and I've just uh, cut it to a little bit of a point. Um, if you have a plastic needle that will go through, by all means use that. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I just could not find the plastic needle that I normally use when I'm using satin cord. So anything that you use, I would use blunt. Um, so if you're using silks, you still want perhaps a blunt tapestry needle, just so long as the cord that you choose to use will go through. So B4 now has to go up to A2. Now the instructions will say that here, you need to go over one. 
So that's going over the one we've already put down before we get to A2. And that's exactly what happens. Okay. So it will tell you when it crosses a thread um, that's already been laid down, as it were, it will tell you whether you need to go under this or over it. So you don't have to think about bites and knots and the principles of knot tying. You just have to follow the instruction. Then A2 needs to come down to B5 and it needs to come down going over one. So the next thing to remember is that you're always going in parallel lines, okay? You'll never go back this way. That would be completely wrong and mess up your knot entirely. So we're going to go down parallel and eventually we'll come over the one, which is right there, going to B5. If anything, my stitches are perhaps just a little bit loose, my holding stitches, but it should be clear as we work through. So under B5. And then we need to go B5 and we need to go, we're gonna have two that we're gonna come up against here. So we need to go under And then we need to go over, and then that's going to take us to A3. I say it's all there in the instruction, the path that you need to take. I'll show you the instruction in just a moment. A3 goes to B6. So it's got to come around again. It needs to go to this one, and it's crossing two. So it needs to go under one of them and over one of them, and then to the holding stitch. So from B6, it needs to go to A4. So we're coming along, we're gonna cross three, so we, and it's telling us to go over, under and over, and then we'll come around to the A4. Just use our needle to pull that, that excess on the holding stitch. And then A4 needs to go to B1. And that's also going to cross three. So it needs to go over, under, over. And then it ends up it's going to go under the holding stitch at B1. From B1, we need to go to A5. And now there's going to be four that we cross over. So we're going to go from B1. This is interesting, you see, because we're at the edge, but that's fine. It, you can just make sure that you cross either one side or the other. So we're going under, then we're going over, and then under, then over this one to get to the holding stitch of five. A5 has to go to B2, so I'm sure you can get the, the gist of what we're doing now. So we go under, over, under, over, and we need to get to B2. Again, just pull up the excess space under that one, because you see they do start to get tight fairly quickly which is why you have to leave that excess when you're using a fat thread. To B2. 
B2 has got to go up to A6. It's going to go over and it's going to go under, over, under, and then over to A6. And then from A6, it's got to go to B3, passing over, under, over, under, over, and then we're at B3. Okay, and you can see that it's all be, being interwoven now. And then from B3, it needs to come up to A1, so back to the beginning. So going under, over, under, over, under, over, and then back. So back to the beginning. I'm not going to go under the initial holding stitch because what we're going to do now is we're going to tighten the knot up. So that is your knot tied, okay? Um, I've untied from the tool and I'm going to put a knot in this end. This is important because then we know that that's the starting end. The next thing to do is to trim the holding stitches. So just snip them, taking care not to snip your main knot thread. Okay, I'll turn it round because you probably will need to catch where the knot is. So it's always a good idea to double check and remove all of those holding stitches. So now you have your knot tied. Now, if you want to put it around a, a large bead or something, you can just slide it straight off of the tool and just keep going. And then you'll have a large knot to tighten up and maybe to double up. But the point of the tools is though that you can get small, progressively smaller and smaller, um, enabling you to make more button sized um, knots, which can be quite difficult actually. Certainly they are if you try to start too large. So that's what each of these graduated sections is for. Now to tighten the knot, you need to hold on to your starter, And then you need to pull up in the direction that you initially worked at. So, in other words, A1 to B4. So you're pulling up as you go to tighten it. And so you make sure that you always work in the same direction as you initially tied the knot. Okay. Now just there, I just want to show you something because this is a mistake that will happen to you when you're using these fine threads. Can you just see right there, I've just caught, when I've done the weaving, I've just caught the thread. Um, this happens quite a bit with rat tail actually. Just snip off that extra line and then you can move it on. But if you find that your knot isn't tightening, that's probably what you did is that you've caught the threads which is why having um, a blunt needle is vital. You, you don't want to ever use um, a sharp needle because that will happen. If that just happened with tape, you can imagine what would happen with um, sharp needles. You do catch it quite a bit. As you can see, as I'm pulling up with the stick, you can use your needle, um, you can use your fingers, but you can see that it's getting tighter and therefore smaller. Now, if you're working one of the fancier knots, a chevron, um, for instance, 
or a herringbone. Often it's a good idea to get it almost to the size that you want before you add the second, the interweave. Um, really, it depends on how practiced you are, if you can sort of manage to keep your eye on, on what it is you're doing with your knot. So you can see that is now tight. It won't go back up to the top section, but we could use it at that section. We could, for instance, if we wanted to, now we have excess thread, we could follow the whole thing around in exactly the same way so that you're doubling up. So it really depends on the effect that you want to achieve. I'm not going to do that on this occasion, but I am gonna leave that there so that the start and the finish crop continues, um, are in the same place. So we'll move down to the next one and tighten again. Sorry, coming out of shot. Sorry about that. As it gets smaller, I want it closer to my eyes so that I can see what I'm doing. and it's getting tighter and tighter. And again, if this is the size of the um, bead that you want or um, filling that you want to put at the center of it, then you're fine. You can slip it off now or you can take it on to the smallest level. It's entirely up to you and what you're going to use for your you actually use your knot four. And so that's tightened up nicely. Let's see. Let's just double check the bead that I intend to use. I've got a very small bead but with this thick thread, I'll never cover it absolutely perfectly. Now you've got two choices at this point. You can put your bead right in and carry on uh, reducing. That is actually a good idea um, if you are using um, anything very small because whilst you could come down to here you have to take into consideration that the width of the tool is, is, has to match the widest part of your bead. So you will still have to tighten when you get the bead actually in place. So I'm just going to switch to my needle so that I can just pull up as they get closer together. And at this point, you need to tighten up so that it goes around whatever form it is that you're actually using. As I say, there's reduction in the, the graduated sections on the tool. Um, they're really the thing that I have found the most helpful because I can work each section without getting in too much of a muddle um, when I actually get to the bead, because this is the bit that actually can be quite difficult because the bead's moving about, you're trying to get it to um, form cylindrical around the bead. And of course, unless you're actually making a globe knot, 
which there are a couple of recipes in, in here for a globe knot. None of the Turks, Turks heads um, are absolutely, you know, they, they have to be tight at the top and then spread out at the sides. So it's something to bear in mind. You'll, you will have a few little gaps. And just keep working around until you're happy. Until you, you know that that covering is covering your chosen center, which of course can be anything. Eventually, and take away that stick because I want to be able to work it right the way around. And so it's starting to tighten up, but there's still a bit of space, so it does need to be worked through. But you can see now, I think, sorry, the paper's moving. You can see now um, how you can work it down until you've, you're making a nice little button shape, okay? So that's a pretty nice tight little knot there now. It could probably be tightened a little bit more, but uh, obviously with satin cord, you can only go so far down. Now, where I brought up so that um, the start and the finish were on either side of one of the um, crossings, you can continue and weave that in a little bit and take it out of the top. If your knot is really, really tight, you can just snip them and they'll sink back in and then you shouldn't actually have any problems. But if you're gonna use a very fine thread of silk, I would always recommend that you weave under, right underneath the crossings and come out in an entirely different place just to secure your threads. If you're using something like the rat tail, what you can do is you can use this these ends to sew your um, button into place on the garment because you sink both of those in through a hole and then splay them out on the um, wrong side of the fabric and then you can stitch that down and that will um, create, um, that creates a really nice way of, of adding the button onto something. But only if you use the thicker cord. It's not, if you're looking to do um, historical knot buttons, that's not what was sort of how it was done. So, um, you know, if you're going for authenticity in costume, then don't do that. Not for um, the early periods. You can get away with it probably for the uh, later periods and up into the 20th century and obviously now. <laughs> so I hope that's helped. Um, I've just thought that I did say I was going to show how I'm writing out and here's the patterns in the booklet that you get. And so the first one, which is this one, is the one that we've done. It takes you through with photographs just to remind you of what we've just done. And you've got all sorts of different button, um, different knots 
shown in the booklet so to get you started and get you going with it. So I hope that you've enjoyed this and will feel a little bit more confident about making little tiny knots for buttons. And please subscribe to the channel, click like, all that other fun stuff, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.